Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you a game between two chess engines, Houdini with an LO of 3461 and Komodo having an LO of 3454. So they are almost equally in strength. The game was held in the Top Chess Engine Championship, TCAC Season 11, Round 43, on 6 March 2018. Let's see the game. White started with e4 and black replied with c5 and we have the Sicilian. Knight to f3, d6, allowing the light score bishop to develop, d4, taking the center, c takes on d4, knight takes on d4 and knight to f6, attacking the pawn. Knight to c3 defending, g6, and with this move black signals that he's entering the dragon variation of the Sicilian. Bishop to e3 and bishop to g7. Let's go back here if black tries to attack the bishop with knight to g4 he's losing the knight. The move is bishop to c5 check and if black blocks with the bishop he's losing the knight. The queen can take because the bishop is pinned or in the other variation he can play knight to c6 and he's losing only the exchange. After knight takes on c6 takes on c6 Bishop takes on c6 check, bishop to d7, and bishop takes on a8. So, in the game we had bishop to g7, intending short castle, f3, controlling g4, short castle, and the most play move in this position is queen to d2, preparing long castle. But white chose bishop to c4, but we transpose, because next move he will play queen to d2. Knight to c6, queen to d2, bishop to d7. We have the Yugoslav attack h4, white tries to open the h-file. If white would have played long castle instead of h4, black could have entered the Chinese dragon with a rook to b8. But in the game we had h4, rook to c8, bringing the rook on the open file, threatening some discovered attacks on the bishop. Also in some lies the rook is sacrificed for the knight from c3. For example, if white castles long here, we would have knight takes on d4, queen takes on d4, protecting the bishop. We have another discovery of the bishop, queen to d3, keeping an eye on the bishop, and black has two options, to take on e3 or play knight to e5, attacking the queen and the bishop. For example, if he plays knight to e5, the queen is no longer able to defend the bishop that's why the bishop has to give it itself with a check. Bishop takes, rook takes on f7 and queen to e2. So in the initial position, white is forced to put the bishop on b3 square. White played another move here. He took on c6. Bishop takes on c6 and bishop to d3. Usually when players castle on opposite sides, each player tries to attack on flanks. White on the king side and black on the queen side. Also, both players need one more move and their opening is done. White needs to castle long and black move his queen. In the game, black started to push pawns on the queen side with a5. White stopped black and played a4, a6, intending to play d5 and long castle. With this move, white finishes opening, rooks are connected and all other pieces are developed. In the middle game, white needs another plan, and that plan is to attack opponent weaknesses, which are the pawns and the weak squares. In this position, black has an advanced pawn on a5 to back out pawns on b7 and f7, and the weak square on b6, and another weak pawn on d6. After white found what to attack, next he needs to see how his pieces can attack these weaknesses. The queen and the rook from the defile are positioned well, attacking d6 pawn. The knight from c3 can go to b5, putting pressure on d6. The bishop from e3 controls both sides of the board. We can notice that b7 pawn is defended by the light score bishop, so a good idea is to exchange these bishops, since white bishop is the worst piece. He's looking at a wall of pawns. The rook from h1 can be brought on the d-file, putting some pressure on the d-pawn. 
As you see, after the opening, we need to spend some time and create a new plan for the middle game. Let's see what happened in the game. D5. It seems that Black is sacrificing a pawn, but he's using tactics. After all pieces are exchanged on d5, Black Queen attacks the pawn and the bishop from e8, the bishop from e3 and the pawn from a4. Let's see that line. E takes on d5, knight takes on d5, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, e takes on d5, queen takes on d5, and queen to e8, double attacking the pawn and the bishop. So after queen to e4, defending both pawns, queen takes on e4, f takes on e4, and white has an isolated pawn that cannot be defended. So black is recovering the pawn and the position is equal. That's why in the game white pushed e5, attacking the knight, knight to d7, f4. We can see that black bishop is locked by white pawns and black plays h5 because white was threatening to play h5. Opening the file. White needs to open files against black king. Playing immediately g4 is not working because black replies with d4 winning the rook. Bringing the rook to g1 is not working because black plays f5, controlling the g4 square one more time. Another option would be to prepare g4 and play queen to e2. In the game, white played the prophylactic move, king to g1, putting his king to safety. Black does the same with his king, queen to e2, and black closes the position with f5. Black blocked the king's side, and the drawback of this move is that e6 pawn is a backward pawn. Usually, when pawn structure changes, we need to adjust our plan, detect the new weaknesses and see how our pieces can help us in realizing our plan. In this position, we can see that black has a backward pawn on b7, e6, g6, and has some weak squares on b6, d6, f6, and g5. White can take en passant, but by doing this, he will open the f-file for black. That's why in the game he didn't take and he played knight to b5, looking to occupy d6 weak square. Also, this move allows white to play c4, trying to activate his light square bishop. If the bishop takes the knight, white opens the position and he's ready for this, while black will have to defend. Let's see that possible line. So, bishop takes, queen takes on b5 b6, the pawn was under attack, c4, knight to c5, attacking the bishop, c takes on b c takes on d5, knight takes on b3, d takes on e6, queen to e7, queen takes on b3, rook to c6, attacking the pawn one more time, rook to d7, attacking the queen, queen takes on e6, queen takes, rook takes, and rook to c1. As we can see, black bishop is out of the game, and white rooks are infiltrating on the 7th rank. In the game, black played queen to e7, knight to d6, placing the knight on d6 weak square, attacking the rook. Usually, when a knight is placed on a fifth rank, it gives you a stable advantage, and when the knight is placed on the 6th rank, it gives you a winning position. Rook to b8, c4, trying to open lines and their diagonals, for the rook from d1 and the bishop from b3, d takes on c4 and queen takes on c4, attacking the pawn for a second time, and black defending the pawn with bishop to d5, attacking the queen and exchanging the bishop. Another way was to play an intermediate move, take on g2 and after a rook to g1, go back with the bishop to d5, but black played bishop to d5 directly, queen to c2, bishop takes on b3, queen takes on b3, and this move attacks b7 for a second time, and black pushed the pawn to b6. The pawn from b6 and the one from e6 are weak and must be attacked. We can see that the knight controls c8 square, not allowing black to occupy this file. For the moment, white has no attacking moves so he needs to improve his peace position. White can put his rooks on the d-file, threatening some discovery with the knight 
picking up the other knight with the rook, but if the h1 rook leaves this file, a4 pawn is hanging. So in the game white played g3 defending this pawn, rook f to the 8 defending the knight, and queen to b5 going forward intending to infiltrate into black position, knight to c5 allowing the queen to move along the 7th rank and maybe go to d7 proposing queen exchange, queen to c6 and black played queen to a7 controls c5 one more time, white was threatening to take the knight and then win a pawn. Another way for black was to bring the dark square bishop into the game to f8 attacking the knight. White took the knight and created an isolated pawn on the c file. Knight to b5 attacking the queen, queen to e7 keeping an eye on the pawn, queen to c7 trying to exchange queens and also attacking a5 pawn. Black played bishop to f8 defending the queen, rook takes on d8, rook takes on d8, queen takes on a5. White has a pass pawn on the a file. As we know, the two plans in an endgame to attack upon a weak pawn and second push your pass pawns. So until now white attacked black weaknesses and managed to take one of them and created this pass pawn on the A file. And now white should continue both plans, push the A pawns and attack the other weak pawns. Black continue with king to g8, knight to d6, the knight comes back and cuts the communication between the queen and the pawn. White threatens to take the pawn. Queen to d7, counter attacking a4. If white takes on c5, black will take on a4. Since there are no attacking moves for white, he should improve the position of his pieces. And white did this and played rook to c1, attacking c5 one more time. Rook to b8, placing the rook on a better square, but black should have taken the knight with the bishop. Anyhow, this position is lost for black because white will take c5 pawn and he will have two connected pass pawns. So rook takes on c5, bishop takes on d6, e takes, queen takes on d6. And white has to be a little careful because white might try to give a perpetual or get some counterplay on the queen side by infiltrating with the queen and pick up the pawns and try to get the queen. But this plan is too slow, white will win first. In the game, white played a good prophylactic move, king to a2, so there are no checks. Rook to d8, and white should start pushing pass pawns with some preparation. Pushing before right away would be a brander because black can give a perpetual. In the game, white played another good move queen to c3, not allowing black any counter chance, king to h7, rook to c7 check, rook to d7, and the rooks are exchanged, king to a3, now white can start pushing his pawns, and the king is shielded by the pawns and the queen, queen to e7 check, and b4, after this move, black resigned, so this was the game between Houdini and Komodo. I hope that you found this video useful. Please watch other games from my channel and leave some comments and suggestions in the comment section. See you next time. Bye.